Hello, uh, I'm back again with another inverter uh, video. Uh, these inverters from China, specifically these uh, inverter boards that uh, require a transformer for them to actually do anything useful. Uh, not that they're useless, uh, but primarily their main function is to invert battery power into uh, mains for your household uh, cottage RV kind of thing for uh, 100 volts to uh, 250 volts or whatever you need to use in your country. In my case, it's 240 volts is what I'm looking for. Uh, that's split phase with uh, the center tap grounded uh, to be neutral. Uh, okay, so getting into it, I've learned quite a few things on working with these, and uh, I'm going to explain that a little bit to you today because there's a lot, there's really lacking information as to what to expect on uh, working with these inverters. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with how they work, uh, and most inverters with the, that are low frequency will work this way, um, but uh, let's just get into it then. Uh, they are The brains of the operation is this uh, board here. You can get these boards off of AliExpress for as low as 5 bucks US, uh, and it is a, a Chinese um, ASIC microcontroller uh, that outputs a pulse width modulated uh, waveform to create a sine wave. Uh, this is called the EG8010 or 8010 uh, and it has some other boards on it too. Now it's, it's still strange to me as to why these components are not available on the western market uh, like DigiKey and things like that. This company doesn't exist for them. I don't, I'm not sure how that whole supply chain works. Um, but anyways, they are cheap if, if you're willing to wait uh, for the slow boat from China. And um, you hook these up to transistors with uh, a few redundant electronics to make sure that uh, they actually turn off when, they, uh, when they're meant to. And uh, you can chop up some DC voltage and get some AC out of it. So what exactly is it outputting? I'm going to illustrate that here. So what we're looking for is a, a sine wave like this, right? And so if you, you have to chop this up uh, into little bits to understand what's going on with this. So we have, this is the zero volts, and this is basically are gonna be our, uh, our high, and, and then plus, and our high minus. Um, and so what we have to start with is basically 48 volts in my case. I'm gonna be using that. And what this is gonna do and it's like this in, uh, in again, many inverters um, that use a little lower frequency. It's gonna, this uses, again, there's a data sheet available for this. If you just Google EG8010, uh, you can get the data sheet and the whole schematic and how this all works is all listed there. But I'm going to lay it out here in this video. I'm going to use a thinner pen because this is going to be chopped up quite a bit. But starting at the peak here, right, it's, it's, this is grossly exaggerated because this is actually module cop chopping it up at, 23.4 kilohertz, and this is only 60 hertz, or in some cases for you might be 50 hertz. That's uh, this little jumper back here. You, see, you can go either 50 or 60 hertz. Now the data sheet for this says it can do actually any frequency, uh, I think within reason, I think uh, if you wanna do uh, like, um, like a high power uh, signal generator, this, this thing can do that. This is a pretty versatile little thing, but for now we're just doing AC mains. Um, anyway, it's just approximating a bit, just simplifying. So this peak power here, it can't exceed your battery voltage, right? This is, there's no transformer at this point. We just want an AC waveform. Uh, the transformer will boost that up. Uh, so that means this peak is going to be 48 volts, or in, uh, in this case, I'm going to use units to say 50 volts. And it's going to go from the peak down to zero. And then it's a little bit less than that on each side of that peak. So that means the pulse is going to be a little narrower, right? And then a little narrower again. And then just kind of like almost a line, really. And it's going to be symmetrical, right? Narrower, narrower still, and just kind of like a line. Hopefully this shows up in the video. Okay. And then what happens when it goes negative? Well, that's why there's actually uh, four sets of transistors on here because... During this section, only two sets are turning on at a time to go from zero volts to 50 volts. And this case is gonna go from zero volts to 50 volts. It's gonna flip. The other two sets of transistors are gonna turn on. Uh, that's why it's called an H bridge, right? It's like this, so it's kinda like this one turns on, and then after they, they turn off, they need to be, they have to be turned off, because if they're not, it shorts out the whole battery and you get all that current flow and you blow up your inverter. And then this one turns on, right? So it's just kind of crisscrossing. 
going back and forth. And but as far as the output waveform goes, it's zero to fifty. And you can't really double that. There's no. It doesn't keep the zero and then go to negative fifty. It doesn't work that way. It goes from uh, zero to fifty because again the the outputs are flipped. And the same waveform happens again, right? You got a you got a like a like a little tiny spike and then a little bit wider and then a little bit wider and then by the time you get to this guy you get your peak you're basically full on and you can't exceed that. Um, so knowing that, that means let's let's now let's go to the next step of choosing a transformer to get this waveform to the voltage that you want. So in my case, I want 240 volts AC. You might want 200 or 210 or 220, whatever. There's different voltages around, around the country. They're usually over 200. Um, you might say, well, I'm from North America. Why don't I want 100 or 120? Um, and that's another point as well. Uh, the transformer that, I'm, that I've selected can do both. You can wire it up for 120 or 240 or both at the same time because it has a center tap. Um, a center tap that's, that has that split. That's it's basically two coils on the output. I'll get that in the next page. But uh, anyways, just trying to answer some questions before they come up. Okay, so selecting a transformer for for me, I'm limited on selecting standard sizes transformers, but I'm also limited on, on my, knowing my battery voltage range. So if this peak voltage uh, is based on a 50 volt battery, then well, what happens when the battery is almost dead, but still good? In my case, I'm using lithium ion batteries. They are still at a full power capability right up until they're almost dead, and even as low as five to 10%. Uh, and, and so for me, that works out to be 36 volts, right? Um, so now to convert that to RMS, or root mean square, so that, that 240 volts, that's 240 volts RMS. The input side of that, I've selected a transformer that's 24 volts RMS. Well, what's that in, in V peak? Well, V peak times 0.707 or the square root of two. Let's switch back over to this. Right, you multiply 0.707 times your peak and that gives you your RMS voltage. Uh, that means the maximum capability that this is, 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 is able to do. Okay, so if I have uh, 36 volts ish. Again, this, this math, math is all done ahead of time. Um, it's going to be pretty close to 25 volts, uh, and and of course, it's going to have some overhead because it might not be a complete perfect uh, system. So 24 volts works just fine, uh, and then you don't need to worry about going over voltage because that's what this has a feedback circuit in it, and it will basically these pulse widths will just get narrower and narrower to reduce that voltage down. Uh, it can reduce the voltage, it can't increase the voltage on its own without a transformer. So a 24 volt transformer is what I, what I picked. Uh, and so that's where I'm going to get into the, the next section because uh, there's a limitation that I kind of ignored and, and didn't really quite understand when I got into this. I, I picked a 7500 watt um, inverter and a 7500 volt amp transformer. Now, when your power factor is one, in this case, when I'm doing my testing for continuous loads, they are essentially the same thing. So don't worry too much about that. If you want to know about power factor, Google it. There's lots to learn on that available. What there isn't a lot of information on is these Chinese inverters. Okay, so based on this, and if I want, um, and I, you have to understand the limitations of this. The limitation isn't just the wattage. It's mainly the current, how many amps can go through these inverters, right? And they don't explicitly say that very clearly on their, on their descriptions. They're not lying. They're not really covering anything up intentionally. They think that everyone wants to hear how many watts it can do. And, and that's, that is important. But how many amps is really the limitation? Because as your voltage drops, if you're going to maintain the same number of watts, your amps need to go up. And they can't keep going up forever because you eventually will set on fire, right? The real limitation here is amps. They don't advertise the amps. In this case, the guy that I got this inverter from, he said that the it's rated for 150 amps on the inlet. The input of this in inverter can do 150 amps. Well, guess what? That's not 48 volts. 48 volts times 150 amps is not 7,500 watts. It's actually 7,000 watts. So that means he probably designed this for 50 volts because 50 times 150 is exactly 7,500. So, but that's on the inlet, right? So the outlet, if I'm outputting what they designed for is that's 50 volts. 50 volts times 0 
that's actually 35.35 volts, right? So, and if I'm, if I, and this is going to be 7,500 watts, again, assuming a 100% efficient system, which it isn't, um, then the current, the number of amps required for that is pretty close to, I think, 212. Yeah, 212 amps. 212 amps. So that means their 7,500 watt transformer is maximum capability full out of 212 amps cannot go over that. That's still pushing the limit, I think, because the inductor they supplied me really shouldn't really go over 150 amps. Or I'm assuming he meant RMS, but this is where things get confused a little bit because, yeah, it inputs 150 amps, but that's that's DC, but RMS AC output is 212 amps. So you, for for power sizing, it's just, that's the same thing. I need an inductor that can do 212 amps if I ever want to see 7,500 watts coming out of this at 35 volts. But keep in mind, I needed a trans. I I, I don't I can't get a transformer that does this. I'll be lucky if I can find a transformer that can do 36 volts. And if I give it 35 volts, I'm not gonna. It's underpowered. I'm not gonna get my target voltage. So the closest thing I can get actually worked out for me because I needed something that can work on the full battery range, right? For my case, it's 50 volts all the way down to about 36 volts. And 36 volts times uh, 707 is 25 volts RMS, which is great because that works out pretty well for a 24 volt transformer, and that's what I used. So a 24 volt transformer, and I was just gonna uh, draw it up here, it's pretty simple. You have uh, a coil here, another coil here like this, and this that's the input, and like this, right? And so what I simply do, uh, I tie these two together to, because it's 12 or 24, but whatever, to get 24 volts, RMS, and then same thing with here, I can do 120 or 240, in this case, I'm going to 240, right? And that's 240, and then this one gets grounded uh, because this is completely isolated, right? That becomes my neutral. So now I can get 120, 120, or 240. Great. Okay, no problem. Except that if I want 7,500 watts, and that's what this is meant for, 7,500 watts at 240 volts, uh, that is about 31 amps, right? But because it's a 10 to 1 transformer, conveniently, that means it's going to be 310 amps on the input required to be able to get 31 amps on the output. Again, assuming 100% efficiency, but it isn't. So it's actually going to be even more than that. I need an inductor that can do 310 amps. That's kind of crazy um, because the inductor that they gave me, it gets you can boil water and you're not even at 100 amps yet. Um, that's too That's unnecessarily hot. Now... Some heat is acceptable. It's normal. Like this, the transformer I have is rated. It's UL certified, but it says on the nameplate it has a hundred degree rise C. Right? When you're putting seventy five hundred watts through this, it will get hot enough to burn you. Uh, it's not like that all the time. I'm just doing a stress test, right? If it can do this, it can do anything as long as I understand what the limitations are. So that's normal. It's designed to that. The inductor they gave me was done, built by hand. I have no idea what it's designed for. So I want to build my own inductor and that'll be another video. But that said, this 310 amps is quite a bit higher than what it's designed for. The limitation is 212 amps. So where does that leave me? What do I need to do? Uh, again, that 212 amps is at this voltage and my voltage is even lower. I need 24 volts, 310 amps. So if they're only capable at 212 amps, then what size inverter do I need to be able to get to 310 amps? Well, it's, it's kind of pretty easy. If their inverters are designed for 50 volts to, to get to their nameplate power level, that means they're assuming you can do 35.35 volts RMS AC on the outlet. So, but if I want one that can do 310 amps, so that means this times this is how much, how many watts, right? And I'm going to back up a little bit, something I should have said at the beginning of this video. You probably stopped watching by now if you don't understand what's going on. But Ohm's law is the, pretty much the basic law of, of, electri of any electri electrical principle. If you don't understand this, if you don't have the, an intuitive grasp 
of, of, of this, then this video is not for you. And actually playing with Chinese inverters and building your own stuff is not for you. You need to understand this. Volts equals amps times the resistance. Power equals volts times the amps. That's it. That's pretty much it. So that's just a quick recap of that. So this volts times this amps is actually pretty close to 11,000 watts. That's the nameplate current. So if I, I, I need a, an inverter that can do 11,000 watts, according to them, to be able to output 310 amps, which will give me, at 24 volts, 310 amps, which will give, give my transformer full power. Um, so that's where I'm at. That's what I learned. I got a 7,500 watt uh, inverter and a 7,500 watt transformer, and I'm wondering why the hell is this thing getting so damn hot? Because they match. Well, no, they, they, they don't match because the current requirement is not pu clearly published. I'm not saying it isn't published because he did say what the current limitation is on the inlet. It's 150 amps, but that gave you a hint. Be the things aren't always as they seem. Um, battery voltages are squishy because they're all over the place when, when, depending on the state of, state of charge, right? So I don't really blame them for anything. They're not trying to deceive you, unlike PowerJack. Uh, PowerJack is, is deliberately uh, deceiving people. These guys on AliExpress, I think it's called number one store or something like that. They sell the red one. This, the blue one here is like a knockoff of that. The red one is the one I recommend. Uh, and they have a, uh, I think, a 15,000 uh, watt. Anyways, they have an inverter that, uh, that I want. I'm getting that one. It's, it's in the mail. It's going to take a while to get here. I'm going to try that one out next. Uh, I've blown up this one a few times now, and i kind of given up on it. So um, that's the end of that. Now, was there anything else I wanted to cover before I leave you today? I think that's everything. Thank you for watching this far. I'm going to let you go. I hope you learned something and um, that these inverters are viable if you know what you're doing. Um, the, oh, that's right. The other thing I didn't mention when uh, explaining this chop up is you have to have an inductor, right? Uh, and saying, well, if my inductor is getting so hot, why not just take it out? Well, I tried that. The results were not sine wave on the outlet. He says that the inductor is recommended if you want to lower the no load current, uh, or in, in this case, and that's fine. That's fine. I do want to lower the load, no load current, but that inductor did add quite a bit of cost to it. And if I didn't, if I didn't care about my no load current, I, I wouldn't wouldn't have got it. But what's more important than that is it smooths out this this choppy waveform, right? Um, this, uh, this chop up here, it is, you're going to get a lot of noise on your uh, output sine wave. The transformer doesn't clear all of it up. Uh, and actually, a lot of it gets expanded even further. You get more noise because it, the transformer is amplifying it, right? Um, you have to have that inductor. Um, so you make sure you get, you get that. Uh, the capacitor helps a little bit as well, but the capacitor does the opposite effect. It pulls more current rather than reduces the current. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll leave it at that. And you guys, play safe.